Turns out the night before he fired James Comey, um, my White House correspondent, bureau chief, and I had dinner with the president. And a significant portion of that conversation was spent talking about how much he hated our coverage and everyone else's, um, relitigating the size of the inaugural crowd, talking about uh, the reasons he feels he doesn't get credit for what he has accomplished, doesn't receive the loyalty he thinks that he deserves. He deplored the tone of political coverage. There's a great deal of meanness out there that I'm surprised at, he said. But just because this serial hostility is sincere doesn't mean that it is not also strategic. During the primaries, uh, David Vandrelli traveled with him between campaign events uh, as he was watching himself on all three networks. Everywhere he looked, it was all Trump all the time. This is what he said. He said, you see what this is, right? It's ratings. I go on one of these shows and the ratings double, they triple. And that gives you power. It's not the polls, it's the ratings. This was the insight. In an attention economy, ratings are power. Not just TV ratings, but Facebook likes and Google searches and Twitter mentions. You have to keep people interested, he says. Which boils down to this. Conflict commands attention. Attention equals influence. And yes, some of this is about indulging supporters who feel alienated from all kinds of elites in Washington and in the media and in places like this. But I would remind you that this also includes millions of people who are not economically marginalized, who are not uneducated or undereducated. And if we only watch him and don't look out at one another, we're going to miss the story. He is outrageous with purpose. On the day of the election, a large majority, more than 60% in each category, said he did not have the temperament for the office, he did not have the experience for the office, and he was not honest and trustworthy. But a similar number said that the country is on the wrong track. And for those for whom bringing about change was the most important issue at stake, 82% voted for Donald Trump. If he has proven nothing else, he has successfully proven that he can change the rules. And ever since, love him or hate him, the commander in chief has commanded the news cycle like no one before him. At times, this feels like a strange kind of fixation, a rubbernecking presidency. I believe he is um, a human algorithm, perfectly engineered to say or do whatever we are most likely to watch. <laughs>